Hey, how are you all this morning? Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. Second cup of coffee and second video of the day. I just shot one and put one up over on American Reversion. If you're not with us on American Reversion, I uh, would love to have you. I invite you over there. It's where we talk more about the political side, um, what's going on in, in, in the world, um, as opposed to just preparedness. So uh, if, if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you're not with us yet over on American Reversion, I always put the link down here below in the information section and a pinned comment. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today, you know, is it a dangerous world? <laughs> you bet it is. It is a dangerous world. And your safety is all in your hands, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. You know, it's it's always been a dangerous world. I mean, for the time that our our ancestors landed on. Now I know that many of you are are, are not in the United States. I, I was I was shocked. By the way, I want to insert this here. I could not believe how many people watch from how many countries. I, I I've never seen it before. Um, I never knew how to get to it. Just the other night, I started just playing around with the different tabs and stuff in the YouTube channel and say, what can I, what can I find out and what, what's, what's this and what's that? Because there are some things going on in, in the background in the Stonemont world uh, that uh, are kind of exciting. And I wanted to have a better grasp of, of the YouTube platform. I've never really studied it. I just get on here and gab and, and talk and put it up there and try to answer all the comments and all that. Uh, but I really started going down there, and I found this page that's got all the different countries of people who watch this channel, and I had no idea. I, I thought it was all going to be United States, you know, some Canadians, some, some Australians, um, a few people in Germany, and uh, maybe Great Britain. You know, I had no idea. So for everybody out there, um, welcome. It's great to have you. It's nice to talk. And if you're in another country and, and you feel like, well, I don't really want to comment because, you know, he's, he's in uh, the United States and he talks about things mainly in the United States. And I don't, you know, hey, uh, give us a comment. Let us know how things are in your country. I'd, I'd, I'd love to know. And I'm sure that many people here would love to know as well. But anyway... What I started to say, it's always been a dangerous world since the, since the time that our first ancestors set foot on, on the shores of the North American continent. And you know, before that, for thousands of years, it was a dangerous world for the people who were already here. You know, they were slaughtering each other for thousands of years before my ancestors ever got here. And, you know, the slaughter didn't stop because people are people and you're always going to have people who want things that other people have whether it's their their stuff their land their life their you know whatever it is it's it, it, it is a brutal world and because of the the quality of life we've enjoyed over the last you know maybe a hundred years um people have forgotten that um i want to talk about how dangerous the world is all you have to do is turn on the news, which I don't watch the news much, but, you know, I scroll the, the aggregators. You know, eight shot in whatever it was. Was it, was it, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter. How many shot in Chicago this weekend, you know? Uh, how many shot here? How many shot there? How many shot everywhere? People have a tendency to think that this is just uh, a, a big city problem. And so many people who are, you know, tuned into the preparedness uh, way of thinking are not necessarily city dwellers. They're, they're either, either suburban, most of them are suburban, and, and a good number are uh, rural. You know, so, so they tend to think of, well, it's, you know, it's not, it's not my problem. Uh, just stay out of the cities. Well, you know, one of the things that, that really brings it home, how dangerous the world can be, uh, is when it does happen outside of an, a city urban core. And last week, was it last week or the week before, something like that, I forget. There was a family that was slaughtered up in, in Iowa. Now, you know, anytime there's a murder or an abduction or something like that in Iowa, it kind of draws your attention because 
Iowa, you know, is is uh, not known for that. You know, I have never known anybody from Iowa that I didn't like. They just seem to be nice people. Now, in many times, many ways, we don't agree politically, uh, but they're just nice people. And I, and I told people that uh, even the, the the criminals that I used to bring back from Iowa were, were not as bad as the criminals I brought back from other places. They just seem to have a, I don't know, a better way about them. But anyway, uh, but there was a family that went camping up at a campground in Iowa. And uh, I'm sure that the parents, it was uh, a father, a mother, a young girl, and a young boy. And I'm sure that they were going out for, uh, you know, what they thought was going to be a nice family time in the campground. And everybody has a tendency to think those places are safe. And man, you know, I don't go anywhere without a gun. I hope you don't either and some sense of security while you're at it. But too many people are out there um, just thinking, well, I'm on vacation, nothing's going to happen, and we're in the campground, nothing happens. Well, they were asleep in their tent, and, and I don't remember the guy's name, it doesn't matter. He came upon them. I don't know the details of the, the situation. I don't really want to know the details because I'm sure it's going to be horrible. I've already seen enough horrible things in my life. I don't... Uh, you know, I, I don't delve for the details on more. Um, the father was shot and stabbed. The mother was shot and stabbed. The daughter was, I forget if she was just stabbed or shot and stabbed and strangled uh, to death. All of them killed. And um, the boy, they're not saying anything about it. He survived, but, but I haven't heard any real detail on him. Um, horrible, horrible. There was another one, some, some, some killing, some psycho killed some people in Ohio, and you know where they caught them? Lawrence, Kansas, just, just 40 miles west of Lawrence, Kansas. It's a college town. Another one never happens in Lawrence, Kansas. These people are crazy, and the crazy people are everywhere. I want to talk to you, i tell you a story about a friend of mine. And, and for anybody out there who does not yet understand the need to have and carry defensive tools at this point, I hope you will listen. Or for those of you who do and you know people who need a little, you know, encouragement, this story is one you can tell. I had a good. I have a good friend. He started off as as a customer of mine in, in one of my businesses, and um, he is a retired prosecutor, and his wife is is still active. She's a corporate lawyer down in the city, and and we got into the and he he read my first book, the reversion. By the way, you can get the books down down below. It's the links the links to the Stone Mount series down below. I'll talk about that more in, in, in just a minute. So he was, a, he was a retired prosecutor. It's not like he didn't know that bad things happened in the world. He did. But he lives he lives just south of me here. Lives in a very nice neighborhood. Very safe as far as he's concerned. Uh, kids go to great schools. He's He's got it made. He's got a life. For the last day he hadn't seen violence since he was, you know, left the prosecutor's office and probably hasn't seen violence in his life since high school or college. I don't know. And even then, not life and death violence. I tried and tried and tried to get him to understand the importance of being able to defend him and his family. Um, I, I tried to explain my position on my feeling that it's not just your right, it's your responsibility. It is your responsibility to provide for your own protection. It's not the state's responsibility. It's not the, you know... The police can't protect you. I said this back when I was on in the 70s. The police, as much as they would like to get there and take care of a bad guy, uh, the police almost always get there after something's happened. Uh, they try to, you know, clean up the mess. They try to find out who made the mess and then take them in for trial, you know, and then, then they either get prosecuted or not and they either get sent to jail or not and, you know, all of that. None of that helps the victim. The only person who is able to help the victim is the potential victim. You know, Jeff Cooper made a, a great statement uh, uh, years ago. 
um, has something about you know the criminals don't don't fear the police they don't feel it fear the courts they don't fear jail and that's true most of them most of the hardcore do better in prison than they do outside because all their friends are there they can lift weights they don't have to work they get fed they got a place no um, and he says they don't they don't fear all these things what they have to to be taught what they have to learn is to fear their their intended victim I threw in the intended I think he just says victim uh, but if the person is there if they are ready and they are ready to defend themselves they are not a victim they are simply the intended victim that flipped it oh good they're mowing grass out there outside my fence uh, we'll see if we can survive this now remember you're on a preparedness channel for that person that says about to say I couldn't stand I couldn't hear you I couldn't stand the sound of that mower out there I will say to you buddy uh, you're on a preparedness channel if you can't stand the sound of a lawnmower how are you gonna make it through a real problem so <laughs> just just letting you know uh, so he was exactly right what I tried to explain to my friend then was that it's not just a right to you know keep and bear arms it's a responsibility because you have a responsibility to yourself for your own safety you also have a responsibility to all those who depend on you for their safety okay so any any parent who does not carry a gun any man who does not carry a gun I, I don't understand it well we talked for years well I don't know two years maybe after two years we were standing on his front step we'd been drinking coffee and I was about ready to leave and we touched on this stuff a little bit and, and finally he stuck his hands in his pockets and he's one of the smartest guys that I've known he's a great guy and he just shook his head and he says Steve I guess I just don't want to admit that I live in a world where carrying a gun is necessary and I just I just said did you just hear what you said you don't want to admit that you live in the world where carrying gun is necessary you just said that you don't you don't want to admit you live in the world you live in look at all the people who are slaughtered Look at all the in, and I don't mean in, in you know in a, in a drive-by because you can't really protect yourself if you're laying on your grandma's couch and you're eight years old and a bullet from a drive-by on the next block comes through and nails you, and that happens all the time in the in, in the cities, but this other stuff happens everywhere. It happens everywhere, and it can happen anywhere at any time. The, the main point that I want to stress on this, it's, it's going to be getting more dangerous as we, as this political season develops and as what it looks like, the political divide is getting more and more, how should I say, uh, energized and violent, uh, your need for personal security is going to even increase over what it is now and it's already there you should be provided and the only person who can provide your personal security because chances are you don't have a couple of bodyguards with you the only person who can provide for it is you it's you the only person who can provide for your safety your wife's safety your husband's safety your kids safety is you And if you won't do it, nobody else will. And if you won't do it, my big question is why won't you? Why won't you? I'll tell you another crazy, stupid story. I don't have time for it here on this one, but I'll, I'll come back in the next day or so and tell you a, 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 an unbelievable story about a guy who just didn't want to carry a gun okay so you know it's it's in your hands your safety is in your hands and and the world is becoming more dangerous every day every day so you think about what you want to do in closing I'll just remind you that as, as everything uh, this is brought to you by the Stonemont series in which we talk about taking care of yourself. Stone Mount series is about preparing for, 
surviving and then rebuilding after a total collapse. But it's all about what it took to do that, what it took to get through there. It's a story about, you know, all those things, but it's a story about people. It's a story about taking responsibility for your own welfare. The books are the reversion, the revival, the renewal, an appeal to heaven, and the blessings of freedom. And if you want to know how to get down there, did I already say in, in well, just a second. If you want to know how to get them, I always put the links down there in the information section, and I've started putting it in a pinned comment, too. You can get them uh, either on a Amazon in, in uh, trade paperback or Kindle, or you can get uh, autographed copies from me uh, personally, and all the way to do all those things is right down there. If you're not with us on Patreon, you ought to be. Yeah, the way to do that is down there, too, because I put other stuff on uh, on Patreon that I don't or can't put on the YouTube channel. And if I didn't say this here, I might have just said it on the other. There's some cool stuff, kind of exciting stuff going on in the background of the Stonemont world. Uh, not not just in the books, and I, I'm, I'm working on the sixth one right now, but uh, also a real world, some, some cool stuff going on. And I can't make an announcement yet, but I will as soon as I can. Remember, we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. The world is a dangerous world. It's always been a dangerous world, and it's getting more and more dangerous. And if you won't protect yourself, no one else will. If you won't protect your kids, no one else will. Uvalde, anyone? Okay. So do do that. Give us some second thought. I know that most of you are on the same page as I am. So probably this is just just preaching to the choir. But I wanted to give you something to share with, with those people that you know that really aren't on our page yet. And they need to be for their sake and for our sake. So you all have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.